be honest. Are you as efficient as you would like to be as a developer? Me neither. Well, if you'd like to do better, let's talk about 10 guaranteed ways to improve your efficiency as a developer. What's up, everyone? My name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. I've worked with a lot of different developers at different stages of their career, and especially a lot of developers early on as they're learning, they're self-taught, they're trying to get their first job or trying to make a next step in their career. And recently I've been thinking a lot about like how to avoid distractions, how to be more productive, how to be more efficient as a developer. And I created a tweet on Twitter, tweets go on Twitter, I guess, uh, that you may be interested to check out. You can go and see some of the results, but I asked uh, like four beginner developers, what are some tips people have to improve efficiency? And we'll kind of touch on a lot of those in this list today, but you can go and see uh, those in the tweet if you want to and add your favorite. So if you have any additional tips that are not covered here, add them in the comments below or go and find them on the tweet on Twitter, because again, that's where tweets go. So I first want to mention that this video is sponsored by Rise. You can find them at rise.o, which is a smart time tracker to help you be more productive and efficient. We'll talk more about them after we cover number one in this list because it's going to be directly relevant. So let's go ahead and get into number one, which is to track your time. Now, here's one thing I've learned in being a professional, having uh, you know projects on the side. Anything that I do, everything that I do always takes more time than I expect. And probably you out there listening are like, yeah, 100%. And I think we always forget that. Like we know it's true, but we forget to plan accordingly. So when we give estimates for things we work on, we almost always undervalue or undersell the estimate in terms of how long it's gonna take. When we give estimates to ourselves, we think, oh, it's gonna be easy. We'll just turn, turn this around really quickly. I'll build this project. I'll create this video for YouTube, et cetera. But things always, always, always take longer than expected. And I think the biggest thing we can do is just learn from that to get better about predicting our time to know how much time we're going to need to be able to accomplish a goal, whatever that goal is. We'll talk about goals more in a second. So some things that I would want to know looking at, uh, you know, the way I spend my time during the day is how much time do I spend in different categories? How much do I, time do I spend creating YouTube videos, working on personal projects, working on my website, uh, doing email, which I do a ton of, I'm sure you do a ton of being in Slack, watching YouTube videos, spending time learning versus actually building things, meetings. How much time does that actually take away from your day, your week, your month, et cetera? to understand how much time you have to do all the other things that you actually have to get done. So I think the big key here is tracking your time, no matter how you do it, we'll talk about a way that you can do it in a second, no matter how you do it, to give yourself some time boxes and to give yourself some learnings about how much time things actually take because almost always, 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 it's longer than you think. So that said, let's talk about Rise for a second, which again is the sponsor of this video. Now Rise is an app that you can add on your computer that automatically tracks time and categorizes time to understand your habits. You can also customize the different categories and rules for different apps and websites. So for example, if I wanna give myself a time box for creating a YouTube video, I can start a time tracker, I can tag it as YouTube, and I can give it a specific amount of time to be able to create that video. What's really cool about this is that you get reports to show where you've spent your time with personalized metrics again, so you can learn from that and kind of improve on your schedule throughout the day. You also get some insights into what websites and apps are maybe distracting you and how often you're context switching, which is 100% a problem of mine. So with Rise, you can build better work habits, take breaks, prevent burnout, and stay recharged between sessions of focused work. Rise is the most complete time tracking app that I have seen and used So go and check it out with the free tier. And if you use the code James quick, or just use the link in the description below for the first 1000 people that sign up, you'll get 25% off your first three months with rise. So a pretty big discount there. So want to be more efficient. Number one is to track your time. Rise is a great way for you to do that. All right. Number two is to minimize notifications slash distractions. And this is a big one for me. Uh, part of my job is to be on social media to engage with the community. I run a Discord, Learn, Build, Teach. If you wanna find more at learnbuildteach.com and join the community, do that. I uh, spend a lot of time in there. I spend a lot of time in other Discords when I can. I spend a lot of time on Twitter. I am active on TikTok. I spend way too much time watching TikTok uh, than I should, to be honest. But I live and die by my phone. I get notifications on my phone all the time and I'm actually pretty bad about checking those immediately when they come through. Now, the one benefit that I have though, is because I create so many videos, I have notifications on my Mac turned off completely all the time, just to make sure that they're never gonna pop up when I'm recording a video. So that's actually a little bit of a hack I have is I have those turned off anyway. 
But one of my really bad habits is I start working on something, whether it's a YouTube video or a, a programming project or whatever. And as soon as that thing gets the least bit difficult or challenging, or I don't know what my next step is, my immediate thing is to go to Discord, to go to Twitter, to go to something else that I think would be easier instead of just tackling that thing hands, head, heads, heads on, not hands on, heads on. So one big recommendation is to minimize those distractions, minimize those notifications. Maybe for some people that means putting your phone in another room. Maybe it just means turning them off on your Mac, but minimize those notifications to avoid distractions and context switching so you can actually focus on the thing that you're currently working on. All right, number three here is to take breaks. And I wanted, I will push back a little bit on traditional advice after watching some other people talk about, give their perspective. So let's start with like the basic advice. Basic advice typically is like, Every 30 minutes, get up and walk around. Every 30 minutes, get up and stand up and do five jumping jacks or something. Like every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes, et cetera. And I think that in principle or in, in theory, that's a really good thing to, to go by. So when I say take breaks, things that I do, I go on walks, I take naps. I'm a huge advocate of taking naps. Like I could, I could spend the rest of my afternoon being really unproductive because I need a nap, or I could spend 30 minutes taking a nap and then be productive for another hour or two after that in the afternoon. So I'm a huge advocate of taking naps. My wife and I take walks with our dogs a lot. It's great for us to get away from our computers. It's great, especially when you're working on a programming problem and you're stuck to get up and just kind of reset your mind to get away from it and come back fresh. I can't tell you how many times I figured out the solution to something by getting away from the computer. I think it's, I think it's in our nature as developers to want to tackle it head on again, not hands on, but tackle it head on and not move away from it but sometimes you just need that reset. So I think the idea of taking breaks on a consistent basis, intentional breaks, getting out and doing something, getting some physical activity, whether it's going for a run, just going for a walk or any other type of activity, I think is great. Now, the one thing that I've kind of watched other videos and, and really kind of resonated with is like sometimes you don't need a break every 30 minutes. If you're working productively for 30 minutes and you've got another 30 minutes of productivity left in you, you don't really want to break that up. That kind of doesn't make so much sense. Leverage that productivity that you have, pay attention to, are you getting tired? Are you becoming less productive? And listen to when you need that break, but it doesn't have to be every 30 minutes. But I do think you should take intentional breaks throughout the day. Make sure you get away from, from your computer, get outside, see the sun, feel the chilly air. It's now chilly here in Memphis, whatever it is, get up and take those breaks to get away from the computer. Almost always for me, when I take a break and come back, I feel better. I feel more inspired. I'm more able to debug a problem that I've been sitting on and I'm just more overall productive for the rest of the day. Now, number four for this is also kind of a physical health thing and mental, but it's to get a standing slash adjustable desk. Now I understand these are, these can be expensive. So if you can't afford that, totally understand if you have the option and the means to get one, a lot of companies now with you working from home are paying for them. That's how I got mine. But if you have the means, I highly recommend taking advantage of it. Now, for me, I have an adjustable desk. So when I sit too long, my back hurts. So I stand when I stand too long, my knees and feet hurt. So I sit. So I'm constantly going up and down. And maybe if you've watched enough of my videos, you've seen the, the two levels of background. One when I'm recording, when I'm standing, one when I am sitting. But the interesting thing is I almost always record standing up and do live stream standing up as much as I can because I feel like I have better energy. Just something about standing up feels really good. I feel more productive. I feel like I have more energy and I think that's something that could help you, especially if you're sitting all day just to get up out of your chair, similar to taking a break, but now you're just standing at your computer is really nice. Now my wife for her birthday, wanted an under desk treadmill. We'll see how this, uh, how this plays out for her, but I think that's a really cool idea as well. I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious how easy it will be to type as you walk, but she's got this treadmill now that we're going to set up. And in theory, she has a standing desk. She'll be able to work and get exercise, which I think again is just good for overall mental state, overall body and feeling of being productive by burning some calories as you're wa walk, not walking, well, walking and working to be able to double dip there. So anyway, I highly recommend getting a standing desk or an adjustable desk, High, highly recommend the adjustable desk to be able to go up and down as you need to, to help protect your back, your legs, feet, and to give yourself some energy throughout the day. All right, number five is to have clear priorities. Now I feel like this has been my number one struggle in my career, especially in my career as a developer advocate on a developer relations team. 
I feel like I've really struggled to narrow down. Here's the exact thing that I am trying to uh, to uh, achieve. And then how do I get there? And so there's lots of things that I could potentially do as a developer advocate. I could create content. I could uh, go and be active in Discord, be active on Twitter, do all these things, go and speak at a conference. There's all these things that how do you know which one of those takes priorities? And this is similar for uh, you know a, a full-time developer. You're learning how to build features or you're, you're targeting building new features for an application. You also have the ability to remove tech debt to make it better for future generations of developers on that project. You, you also spend a lot of time learning. You spend a lot of time planning. You spend a lot of time working with your team to talk through what you're doing. So how do you actually prioritize that time? And I think you can only really answer that specifically but you have to be very specific with what those priorities are. Now, here's here's an example of what I do. I try to spend time every Monday morning to look at the things that are in my backlog uh, and try to prioritize them based on my best estimate at Monday for the rest of the week. Now, this gives me at least a structure for the week. But one of my other tips is to constantly reprioritize these things as those priorities need to change. Just because something is a priority on Monday doesn't doesn't mean it's still going to be the priority on Thursday. Maybe something else now is priority. So I think being able to tag, like if you use a Kanban board or something to track your uh, your to do items or whatever they are, tagging them as low, medium, high priority gives you again a sense of priority. Also, having due dates is a great way to have priorities as well because I prioritize by due dates. If I don't have a due date, it's easier for me to push it off, but give yourself a due date, define the level of priorities for the things that you have in your backlog and constantly prioritize those. Now, one reason this is really important for me is there's an infinite amount of things that I would like to do. There's an infinite amount of books, documentaries, podcasts, all these things that I would like to learn about also, there's an infinite amount of languages, frameworks, tools in the web development space. You probably can attest to this. And that gets overwhelming. So in terms of prioritizing, now number six here is to learn one thing at a time. I see this all over the place, especially with beginner developers. They get this course on Udemy. They are watching this tutorial on YouTube. They're following this other tutorial from this other site. And they're doing too many things at once. And that's going to sacrifice your learning ability at one thing because you're trying to learn multiple things at one time. So whatever it is, find one resource. If you're in your learning journey, find one course that you're going to work through and work through that thing until you finish. Now you may, you may consider yourself finished with the course halfway through because you've gotten out of it what you need and it's fine to move on after that. Whatever your definition of finished is, get to that point and then move on to the next resource. Don't try to take on multiple resources at one time. It will sacrifice your learning journey in either one of those categories because you're trying to do too much at one time. And in a world where there's a new framework every day, in JavaScript, you don't need to know them all. As much as I would like to, I don't need to know them all. I do have the benefit of being able to create content on newer frameworks, but that's my benefit as a content creator. Most software developers don't have the time and the resources to go and learn everything as it comes out. So be comfortable with where you are while also continuing to learn one thing at a time and prioritize whatever that thing is based on what you think is most important. All right, number seven here is creating clear goals. Now I talked about my experience in uh, developer relations and not knowing what my priorities are. A lot of that lines up with not knowing what my specific goals are. So one of the cool things about when I do time tracking now is when I say, hey, I'm gonna do a tag of YouTube, I can write a message in there to say, I specifically want to record and edit this one video. So now not only am I tracking that time, but I also have associated with that what my specific goal is. So any goals that you have, whatever they are, try to come down to tangible numbers and tangible deadlines of when you're gonna finish them. Again, I work based on deadlines. It probably helps other people too, but make sure you're as clear as you can be on what those goals are. I think another important aspect is uh, to try to maintain your mental positivity with goals. Even if you don't meet your goals, that's okay. But by having the goals specifically, being able to track whether or not you met them, now you're able to reflect on, did your goal make sense to begin with? Should it have changed? Should it be changed in the future? Did you do something that was inefficient along the way to not meet there, to not meet that goal? So it gives you an ability to reflect on your progress for meeting the goal and then be able to plan better in the future. So create very clear and specific goals. Number eight is to do the hardest thing in the morning. 
or whenever you are the most productive. So some people wake up really early, some people stay up really late, whatever your schedule is, whenever you have the ability to tackle something hard, go ahead and tackle that in that time space. For me, I get that out of the way in the morning. The things that are the most challenging for me, I try to do in the morning, and then I spend the afternoon writing code or something that's more fun to get my energy levels up. So just pay attention to how you work, what your energy levels look like during the day and try to associate you the different types of work that you have with the different times of day that you are most productive and take that hardest thing and go ahead and knock it out whenever your most productive time period is. Number nine is to not procrastinate. This is very simple. You've probably always heard this. I still struggle with this every day. I have something in my backlog that I think is gonna be tricky. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it. And that kind of overwhelms me. And because of that, I put it off and I don't tackle it hands on, head on uh, when I should. But what I find out is after I actually get started in that thing and do tackle it head on, it's not as bad as I hyped it up to be in my mind and I'm able to knock it out and feel much better about myself because of that. So. Don't procrastinate is very simple advice. You've heard it all the time, but it is actually really tricky to follow. So give yourself a little push to do the thing that you've been nervous about that you think is overwhelming. Go and tackle it one step at a time. Go ahead and get started. Don't procrastinate, do it. And I promise you, as you make progress with whatever that thing is, you will feel better about yourself. Lastly, number 10 is to create consistency and a rhythm. And this is taking all of the things that we just talked about and building those into a consistent day or week or month schedule for you. One of the things I've really been struggling with recently, my wife and I have been traveling a ton, which makes it really hard to eat well, to work out, to run, to be productive with work. All of these things messing up my schedule have made it really hard for me to be effective as a developer and a content creator the last couple of weeks. So I'm excited to be home for a couple of weeks and try to be more productive but whatever you take from the tips above, try to wrap those into a consistent day, a consistent week for you, because once you get in that rhythm, you will become more and more efficient at that rhythm, at taking advantage of these tips and become more efficient as a developer. So anyway, I hope these tips helped you. I hope you have some motivation to go out there and be more efficient as a developer. Let me know what tips you think I missed in the comments below. You can also go and find that tweet that's linked below as well. But let me know what you think you missed and what extra tips you have. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.